talking about the heavy tea roadshow. Uh, Stick in California for now and go to Newport with Aaron. Aaron, you're the first caller of the night. What's growing on? All right. Hey, guys. Good to talk to you. Thanks for taking the call. I appreciate it. All right, yeah, dude. Thanks bro. for calling. What's growing? You sound professional as fuck. <laughs> oh, hey, appreciate <laughs> so, that. Sounds <laughs> very nice. Hey, hey everyone. Hi. Thank you very much for calling in. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants so, a job? Uh, listen, I heard about you guys. Uh, I was over at A-plus Hydroponics in Costa Mesa talking yeah. to Lance. He said, you know, you're, uh, you're, I'm a brand-new grower, just got my seeds on order. They haven't come yet, so I'm really excited to put some uh, in some dirt. And uh, he told me about your show, and I'm hoping you can answer some questions for me. So the key question I have is, Lighting. I've been kind of searching online, trying to listen and talk to people, and there just seems to be so much, so many options. There's LED, there's HPS, there's fluorescent. I don't know where to go and what I should be starting with as a startup grower to try to get my seed to grow properly. Well, to start with seedlings, you want a low light output. I prefer high output T5s. I know I just said low low output, but they're higher output fluorescent lighting, the T5s. Each bulb puts out about double of what two of the T8 bulbs are, your traditional um, fatter fluorescent lighting. Um, the reason I like those for veg and for starting seedlings or clones is because they don't have a lot of heat, and the plants are a lot more sensitive when they're smaller. So um, you don't have them wilting away. You have a good amount of light. Um, you can actually get the light closer because of the the lower amount of heat as well. And with that, you have less stretching and you get uh, closer internodal spacing. Of course, you get them in, uh, they're usually 6,400 or 6,500 Kelvin, which is a white blue spectrum. Um, that's Then for bloom, there's nothing that compares to a uh, HID lamp. Uh, you want to use a high pressure sodium. Uh, the double endits are really, really hot right now. People are crushing it with them. Um, the idea of getting more usable photons, more usable light to the plant um, is what you want to focus on, not just lumen output. If you talk to Jair from Gavita, he says uh, lumens are for humans, but but the photons, the PAR score is what you want to look at. So more usable light. And the really only two systems that are giving that right now are the double-ended systems and then the OG hood from Grow Light, which holds the, the, the bulb vertical and is your traditional um, style that has a remote ballast and so. But LED lighting, I mean, it works good. There's some new studies from the, uh, I think it's Utah State University that show LEDs, uh, the newer generation LEDs very, being very promising to plant growth. Mm -hmm. But as far as what everyone's using nowadays and what's most affordable, uh, it's it's the, the OG hood or the double in it. And I'm and I'm gonna say that it's also gonna depend on the space that you have to grow in. Absolutely. If you're growing in a two by two broom closet in the yeah, corner of your apartment, you're not gonna put a thousand you, watt in there. Huh? Yeah, you're not gonna put a big light in there. You need to be able to keep the room, the environment in check. Um, I'm seeing a lot of interesting stuff with the ceramic metal halides that are people have out now too. Uh, the 315 watt ceramic metal halides have almost an identical spectrum to the sun. Um, a lot of people are starting to use those as well. Uh, some of the LEDs, like he said, the ones with the Cree drivers or whatever, C-R-E-E -E, uh, type of LED, some of them are looking promising. But ultimately, the 180-watt or 300-watt LED light that claims to replace 10 1,000-watt lights isn't doing that. Um, most of the LEDs that grow similar quantity and yield to a 1,000-watt HPS are putting out close to a 1,000 watts. So it's still going to be what you get out of it. Yep. Um, what size area are you growing in? You know, it's it's pretty small. I've got a bunch of seeds on order, and I'm really only going to grow probably 20 or so plants at once. Just see how they go, and then do another round. Well, so. 20, 20 plants would fit in like a 4 by 8 area, so how big of an area do you actually have? Yeah, I've got enough space to fit a 4 by 8 okay, okay, yeah. Well, if you're going to do a 4 by 8 I would suggest that you do either three 600-watt uh, HID HPSs or two 1,000s. Yep. This, 600s will give you more light source points. About six, 65 to 75 watts per square foot is what you want. Yeah, and that and that should do it for you good. If you can, if you can run a sealed area with uh, air conditioning and CO2, that's also going to cut down on funky odors and give you a more Down uh, there rigid experience. In Costa Mesa, Newport Beach, closer to the ocean, controlled environments, what you want to do. You don't want to be bringing in that dank saltwater air that can lead to bud mold and other problems. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so controlled environment agriculture, CEA, is what you want to do. You close it all up. 
You have your charcoal filter in there to filter any contaminants or odors out of the inside of it, and it just recirculates. You don't have to have this charcoal filter blowing the air out f to scrub it. It just has to pass through the carbon on uh, the entire s cubic feet of the room every one to three minutes. So that, and it will scrub it effectively. You put in a split system air conditioner in there um, for 2000, the, a 12,000 BTU, a one ton is gonna be real easy and nice to put in there. Um, it'll keep it perfect during the, the even hottest parts of the summer. And then you wanna probably add like a 50 to 70 pint dehumidifier in there as well, because when the lights shut off, the AC is not going to be running so much, and you want that dehumidifier to take the excess moisture that the plants are transpiring when the lights go out. So you got to keep everything in check, the humidity, the humidity and the temperature at a rigid 75 to 80 degrees for temperature, and then anywhere from 40 to 55 percent uh, relative humidity. And keeping it in those parameters will keep away most um, insect problems, pathogen problems, and make your plants super happy. Um, you know, full sun, that type of um, temperature and humidity, any plant's going to thrive. Yeah. yeah, and you know, a lot of people will, when they're first starting out, they'll try to piece together some system. They won't have AC. They'll be bringing in fresh air. Their, their temperatures swing crazy. Their humidity swings crazy. And it, it's a lot harder to have success that way. I find that people who go ahead and invest the, the little bit of extra money in the beginning to have the air conditioning, to have the CO2 enrichment, to have the uh, dehumidification, you're giving it a rigid environment that the plants thrive in, and it makes it a lot easier to grow said plants. And typically, it will more than pay for itself at the end. If you're running two 1,000s and you have, you have to spend an extra 1,000 bucks on air conditioner and dehumidifier to keep the to keep the room climate controlled you're going to see your your money come back on that on the first harvest because you're going to yield probably twice as much as you would now th trying to struggle th your way through it <clears throat> and thinking that certain issues may be caused by you doing something wrong when it could be caused by a bad environment so when you know your environment is like heavy tea says 75 to 80 degrees and your humidity is 40 to 60 percent then that eliminates adequate airflow yeah and you got good fans blowing around on the plants and the it's a happy place for plants to be it's a lot easier to know if you're doing things right because you're not a new grower who doesn't understand that your room getting to 90 is the reason your plants look bad and you're thinking well maybe i'm not feeding them enough or watering them too frequently or not enough and this that and the other so we've said several yeah. times environments 90 to 95 percent of it and then the other you know the majority of the rest of it is genetics if you have yeah. good genetics good environment the plant can grow um any donkey can go give the plant what it needs and nutrient requirements, right? And that's where the difference in nutrients come in is there's not a lot of difference in all the nutrients. They have a lot of the same elements. They're in different formulas, different proprietary formulas, yep. uh, different raw sources that it comes from. Mm -hmm. But pick a, a pick one to work with and stay with that and really master that. People jump around too often and then there's a learning curve because they correlate their success with their nutrient program and their success is – mostly correlated to how much experience you have. If you're a newbie beginner or if you've done it four or five times and you're learning from past um, mistakes and past grows and applying it now. So there's a lot of different things that you got to look at. Um, don't be fooled when you go into the grow store and you see a bunch of hoods that have flanges on it for air cooling. Um, those are pretty much antiquated. People, might, for the most part, even on large um, scale commercial style gardens are running controlled environment, closed everything. Um, and that's because a lot of times that we're finding these HID bulbs actually need to remain hotter, and especially the double-ended bulbs, to reach their full potential, to agitate the gases to the right temperature that you get the full photon, the full light output. But but air-cooled reflectors in, in uh, HID gardens do have advantages uh, because you can keep the heat from the lights, you can remove it from the area, giving you less cooling requirements, saving you money on electricity, saving you money on uh, on buying equipment to, to air condition the space. You'd need a lot less AC if you have air-cooled reflectors that pull air from outside of the grow room through the reflector and blow that hot air back out. You will um, for so, the two lighter. It's a small yeah, for, yeah, anyway. right. So so if if you're just in a two lighter like you're doing and you can afford a decent air conditioner, you shouldn't have any issues but, with that. But so you should look at like an OG hood or something like an agrotech that's closed in that has four sides to it. If you're not gonna air cool it, don't get a hood that has the flanges on it because those are just two wide openings that are gonna let right. light go to the side away from your garden. You want all that light Get into the garden. That's where you're going to increase yields and do better. Good. You know, I'm a newbie, and I'm, I'm on a budget, so 
what I truly believe in is rooftop gardening. So go ahead and throw that, you know, your little heat mat, your heat starter, your seed starter thing up there on top of the roof, and it's going to keep it warm. It's going to get those uh, seeds to pop really quick because when the sun hits that roof, the roof gets caught. Heats up Fantastic your little seat, Matt. Yeah, that's awesome. Dude. And then you're that's gonna be good. And then you could go from Aaron, there. Aaron, were you thinking about doing uh, hydroponics or soil? I was gonna do soil. I was uh, gonna do a mixture of some Fox Farm Roots Organic General Hydroponics and some Black Gold. That okay. works good on on roofs too. Yeah, it's a nice mixture there. So let me send you some of the some stuff to boost up your overall yield from Mission Fertilizer. Completely organic line Mission Fertilizer. You don't need any pH adjusting PPM meters. It works great with tap water. You put in the recommended dosages in your in your water, give it to your plants, observe what your plants are doing. If they're slightly yellow or lighter green, you just need to add more of your base nutrient. If they're a darker green, you could tailor back a little bit, but super easy to use to set you up for success. Um, every good grow store owner knows that the biggest thing for newbies, you want them to come back. You don't want to take advantage of them. So when they come back, because they're successful, that's where Mission Fertilizer comes in. That is something that is so easy to use that a store could recommend it. Um, I'm going to send it to you for free. Aaron, I'm going to send you the Grow, the Bloom, and the Boost. And when you're down there, um, see if they have the Enhance, the Sweetener, or the Sweeten, and the Roots. I guess the Roots are going crazy all up north right now. Is it? Yeah, hippies are going crazy for him. Roots. <laughs> hippies love that. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Stuff. I appreciate yeah. you listening and calling in, man. Tell a friend. You got to hook up. Do it. Thanks very much. I took some great notes here, so thanks for all the super information. I appreciate it. It, it, will, it will be back up for listening uh, tomorrow, too. And stay on the line. You got to talk to my screener to get your prizes. I'll do it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling, man. Can all right. It. Cool. New caller. New good time. Um, listening to dfzradio.com.